Hello everyone. Today we'll be looking at the project Academy Software Foundation and going over how to properly review the committees listed in PCC. The committees listed may include mailing lists or mailing list members that are not really on the committees. We will delete the committees that shouldn't be there or remove the members that are not really committee members. A typical thing for projects we'll see is because committees were populated into Salesforce, one for each mailing list is you may have a public mailing list and a private mailing list for the same committee. Like this example here, we have a public technical advisory council as well as a private technical advisory council. The goal of a committee is to list the members of the committee, any alternatives or proxies for that committee, and also list any observers for that committee. Observers allow project administrators to include users that are not formally members of the committee, but are entitled or expected to participate in most committee business, such as legal counsel or administrative stuff. Typically, we have found that the private list, when we see both versions of a committee, maps more closely to who the committee members are. Because of that, we can delete the public version of the committee. When deleting the public version of the committee, we are essentially deleting the public mailing list, which was populated as a committee due to our Salesforce import process. Deleting it from the committee screen does not delete the mailing list. We will be able to link the one committee to both mailing lists under IT services and mailing lists. So the private technical advisory council list and the public technical advisory council list will both be linked to the one committee to ensure the committee members are on it. We'll click into the committee now and drill in to see who the members are. If we click on manage committee, we can see that this is a voting style committee. I am also going to rename the committee. Technical advisory council private discussion is the name of the mailing list, but we want the name of the committee. For reference, I will be taking a look at the project's charter. This is the project charter for the Academy of Software Foundation Fund. Here, I can see the project charter specifies what the official boards and committees of this project are. Governance Board, Outreach Committee, Legal Committee, Budget Committee, and a Technical Advisory Council. The project charter confirmed the committee and its name. This is the Technical Advisory Council. So I'm going to go back to PCC and rename this. I'll also be matching the description from the charter. We'll just copy and paste this here. The type of this committee is a technical oversight committee slash technical advisory committee. And it is a voting committee. If there was a web page, perhaps a wiki, or even a Google Drive page, anything that relates to where this committee does business or where this team does business, we can post a link to that here. So this is the Technical Advisory Council. We can notice that there are no observers in this committee. If there's anyone who has a standing invite and will be in all of the meetings, for instance, a PMO from the Linux Foundation, we would want to go ahead and add them as an observer. So the use case here is say you have a Linux Foundation staff member or someone who is providing a technical role in running the meetings for your committee. It is helpful to add them as an observer to ensure that they are always linked to mailing lists and invited to meetings associated with your committee. Going back to our committees list, we have deleted the duplicate TAP committee, gave the private technical advisory council its proper name, and verified the members are accurate. Taking a look at the budget committee, we can see that the budget committee here is not a voting committee, meaning we won't be able to validate roles. The charter notes that the treasurer should be the chair of this committee. 
This suggests if we want to specify who the roles are, we would more than likely want to change this to a voting committee. So then we would go into PCC, change this to a voting committee, and I'll remove the reference to the mailing list here. Now, if the treasurer of the board is an ex officio member of the budget committee, we would change their status from observer to voting rep and give them their chair role. And then assuming the use case earlier from the technical advisory council, these would be LF staff. As people added to provide expert opinion or help with the process of crafting the budget, they are not formal members of the committee, but as special invitees, we would want to keep their observer status. So keep the observer status here, but update the LF staff role. Taking a look at the governing board, this one is already marked as a voting committee. You can see here, we have voting reps and alternate voter reps. Someone listed as a secretary and someone listed as a chair. So similar to what we said in the Technical Advisory Council Committee, there may be some members we may want to add to the LF staff role. We can also note that there is no treasurer here, even though there was a treasurer listed in the charter for this committee. For instance, if Bruno was the treasurer here, as we noticed he was for the budgeting committee, we can add his role here and also include start and end dates. Lastly, going back to committees, I noticed that there was a mailing list, open shading language private discussions list that was brought over. This sounds like it belongs to a sub project. So we won't want this committee to live here. Maybe it is a committee, maybe it's not, but we could create unofficial committees. For example, if we had a group of technical leads for an open shading project that routinely schedule meetings with each other and have mailing lists like the open shading language, we can still define this as a committee but we won't want to do it here. We'll go to the sub project. So I'll search for shading, pull up the open shading language and then click on committees. And I see that there are no committees added. So this may be something like technical leads and we'll change the type of this to other as it is kind of unofficial. We can go and add the individuals we saw on the previous committee. Now we can delete that committee from the ASWF project because we have now correctly identified it as an open shading language committee. Now I noticed in addition to creating this unofficial committee for technical leads in order to create mailing lists or scheduling meetings for those four individuals, there are no other committees added here. And that's also curious because there's more than likely a technical steering committee a lot of our projects will have a technical advisory committee at the umbrella level and then something like a technical steering committee. For example, Open Color IO's technical charter is here on the wiki and they define a technical steering committee. And here's open shading language, what we're looking at, and they have a governance file on GitHub. I can see here that they have a committers and technical steering committee. They have two elected roles as well, chair and chief architect. Being so, we would want to create a technical steering committee at the open shading language level because it doesn't exist yet. We'll call it technical steering committee. In this case, we'll link to the GitHub documentation for this. It is a voting committee as this is an official committee that has offices and is defined by the governance. Now we can add the person who is the chair. When we do have additional offices that are listed in the governance documentation, like chief architect, either try to match as closely with the available role or work with the LFX team to create a custom role.
we can list this as a chair or lead in this instance. Committers is a special class of individuals we can make a committee as well. LFX's platform uses committees to showcase individuals' involvement within a project. So we can create a non-voting committee under open shading language called committers. And for now, we can define the type of this as other, but in the future, we will be adding a committee type called committers slash maintainers. For now, we will not be adding voting. If you do have a concept of something like a PTO, a primary technical lead, and you want to be able to select the role of lead, you can enable voting. Then you can track when people became committers and stopped becoming committers or leads. This completes the cleanup of committees in a project. We've looked at committees in a project, committees in one of the sub projects of that umbrella, the charters, some of the governance bodies, both at the umbrella and sub-project level defined in those charters, how to go and create missing committees, and ensuring that people have the correct roles, removing people that have no standing invitation that may have been brought in from a mailing list, or adding administrative staff as an observer if they do have a standing invitation.